Okay, so here's the second variation on tubing calculations if we need it to find the maximum pressure that that tube can hold. So we'll run through an example here and learn how to do that. Okay, so same process as we did before. We'll look at the question, we'll reference the code, and we'll come up with our solution. So here's our example number two, and it says calculate the MAWP, the maximum allowable working pressure for a water tube boiler tube, uh, which is 73.5 millimeters outside diameter, OD, and has a minimum wall thickness of 4.71 millimeters. The tube is strength welded into place in the boiler and is located in the furnace area. The tube material is carbon steel, SA210-A-1, with a mean wall temperature of 280 degrees Celsius. Okay, so same process that we're going to go through before. Um, the first thing that we want to do is identify that this is a tube. And I guess the tube is within the limits for tubing, 125 millimeters outside diameter maximum. And it appears that it is. So um, what that means is that we are able to use our formulas out of our code so for tubing. And so in this case, because we are looking for our MAWP, we are going to use the pressure version of our code, uh, our, our, our um, formula. So P is equal to SW, large bracket, 2T minus 0.01D minus 2E, and all of that divided by D minus T minus 0 0.005 D minus E. Okay. Double check my equation again. Just be careful that you don't have mistakes with the decimal places. That's pretty common as well as the negative signs. We have a whole bunch of negatives on the bottom. Um, just be careful with that. Okay. So um, I'm just going to then go and make a list of the stuff that I need to find. I'm going to need to find S. I'm going to need to find W. Uh, looks like I have a T. I have a D. And I have a lowercase e. And let's just figure out what do I know and then what do I need to find. So I have a D value. That was my 73.5 millimeters. I have a minimum wall thickness of 4.71 millimeters. And I guess I got to find the rest of these things. So in order to find S, let's make note of a couple things and then we'll go to our table. First thing that I want to make note of is the material. So SA210A1. And I also want to make note of the temperature, so 280 degrees. Let's open up our code and we'll go and look through for those materials. Okay. So if we scroll down to the material property page, um, we can start looking through our list. Okay, I don't see it on that first page, so I'm gonna keep skipping ahead. And then I have another set of materials. So 210A1. Uh, do not see that as well, so I'm going to keep going, and if I keep keep coming down here to the third block, um, if I scroll down my spec number, um, I have it here on line 22. And that makes sense, it is a tube, there are no restrictions on its use, so that looks pretty good. So we'll remember line 22, and then we're going to come down. So next page is going to tell us its applicability, and we can see on line 22 that, yes, it is applicable under section 1. And if we keep going down then, line 22, um, we can scroll across and find at our temperature, and I believe our temperature was 280 degrees. Now, we run into a problem, 280 isn't listed on our table, 
So what we would want to do is always round up to the next highest temperature. So in this case, 300 degrees, and we'll find our value line 22 and 300 degrees uh, gives us a stress value of 118. Okay, so my stress value of uh, 118 MPA, and I guess if we're making notes, that was out of my section 2, table D, and maybe we even say at 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, so um, similar situation, we have a low temperature for our mean wall, um, well below the 500-ish the degrees that would be required if we had one of those creep reduction factors. So that meant that W, similar to the last section, is going to be equal to 1. And in addition, because E is strength, uh, is a strength well at tube, uh, E is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so we have everything we need. Now we can throw in our numbers into our equation and do our calculation. One thing that we want to be careful of is that we don't forget to multiply everything by S at the end, so I often want to just make sure I really emphasize that. So P is equal to 118 times my S value or my W value of 1 um, because sometimes we forget about it uh, with all the square brackets and all the work that we have to do inside. 2 times 4.71 minus 0 0.01 times 73.5 minus 2 times 0 all upon 73.5 minus 4.71 minus 0 0.005 times 73.5 minus 0 in bracket and square bracket. Okay, so be really careful with this equation. You have a lot going on, so make sure that you have it um, uh, do it by steps so that we're not trying to do everything all at once. Um, once again, before I start all this, I want to make sure I write out my strength value here so I don't forget about it. Uh, very common mistake. So 2 times 4.71 minus 0 0.01 times 73.5. So 8. 0.685 and on the bottom 4.71 plus 0 0.005 times 73.5 gives me 69.1575 on the bottom and my P in this case 118 times 8 685 and I have a pressure 14.819 and that would be an MPA. Um, I'm being asked in KPA so pressure in this case 1,000 or 14,819 KPA would be my maximum allowable 